Good day, presenting you the lecture endometriosis. Endometriosis is defined as the presence of normal endometrial mucosa, glands and stroma abnormally implanted in locations other than the uterine cavity. And this tissue processing the same steroid receptors as normal endometrium is capable of responding to the normal cyclical garminal milieu. Microscopic internal bleeding with the subsequent inflammatory response, neovascularization and fibrosis formation is responsible for the clinical consequences of this disease. Its progressive uh, debilitating disease affecting general physical, mental and social well-being of women. Affects uh, nearly 7-10% to of women of in reproductive age. 30% uh, of those who are uh, infertile or present with pain. The most frequent sites of uh, implantation are pelvic viscera and the peritoneum. Less commonly the cervix, hernical sacs, the umbilicus, laparotomy or episiotomy scars may be involved. Theories of pathogenesis of endometriosis, its transplantation theory, celomic metaplasia theory, induction theory, some genetic factors, immunological factors, the cellular and molecular etiologic theories label endometriosis as inflammatory and estrogen dependent disorder. Early in the uh, 20th century, the Samson proposed his theory of retrograde menstruation through the fallopian tubes into the peritoneal cavity as the cause of endometriosis. Nonetheless, uh, the conditions that increase the rate of retrograde menstruation, such as congenital outflow, tract obstructions, do increase the risk of endometriosis. Subsequent studies have shown that retrograde menstruation is a quite common physiological event and cannot adequately explain the extrauterine implantation of endometrial tissue. It is uh, uh, therefore conceivable that early endometriotic foci development depends on the influence of various factors such as hormones, cytokines, growth factors and other factors present in peritoneal or ovarian fluid or the bloodstream. This sheet menstrual uh, endometrial cell Cells retain the ability to attach the peritoneum, proliferate and differentiate and invite in the underlying tissue. Further dispersion of endometrial cells via lymphatic systems might be the origin of lesions at more distant locations, such as thoracic or cerebellar endometriosis. Uh, in this case, a 40 years old woman with history of congenital gidrocephalus and the recent onset of headaches and gait disturbance. Uh, MR images show lobulated superior vermion mass with the fluid levels uh, indicated its cystic nature, its cerebellar endometriosis. Uh, diaphragm lesions revealed uh, in operation and it's another case of um, uh, extragenital endometriosis. And uh, this is perforations in the diaphragm tendon center and uh, this is the uh, endometrioid implants on the diaphragm. Concept of Tissue Injury and Repair Mechanism, TR. Leindecker and colleagues proposed a new concept of tissue injury and repair mechanism to explain the common pathophysiology of adenomyosis and endometrial development. TR is based on the observation that women suffering from endometriosis or adenomyosis display alternations in dyspare and hyperstasis waves, which might attribute for more trauma. In addition, this altered uterine peristalsis could cause the dislocation form of uh, more basal endometrium and thus a greater number of stem cell uh, like cells uh, present in the retrograde reflux menstrual. Furthermore, atopic endometrium from women with endometriosis displays a reduced desolization, capacity indicating that more in undifferentiated cells are flushed retrogradely in the peritoneum cavity. Microtrauma also exposed of extracellular matrix components in the peritoneal fluid cavity, which uh, uh, has been shown to promote adhesion and proliferation of endometrial stromal cells. Furthermore, surgery in itself uh, could uh, aggravate the development or progression of endometriosis by repair process under the concepts of the TR. Metaplasia, celomic metaplasia theory. Metaplasia, or changing from one normal type of tissue to another normal type of tissue, is another theory. The endometrium and the peritoneum are derivates of the same celomic wall epithelium. Transformation of celomic epithelium into endometrial type glands in response to as yet unknown stimuli could explain endometriosis in unusual sites. 
Salamic metaplasia is also believed to explain the occurrence uh, of endometrial endometriosis in women who have undergone total gysterectomy and are not taking estrogen replacement. Peritoneal mesothelium has been postulated uh, to retain its embryologic ability to transform into reproductive tissue. Such transformation may occur spontaneously or it may be facilitated by exposure to chronic irritation by retrograde menstruation fluid. This picture shows the pelvic peritoneal biopsy and the metrial glands and stroma, uh, surround, uh, glands surrounded by stroma in gematoxylene and eosine stain. Remnant Mullerian cells. Another theory states that remnant Mullerian cells may remain in the pelvic tissues during development of the Mullerian system. Under situations of estrogen stimulation, they may be induced to differentiate into functioning endometrial glands and stroma. The induction theory. Lavender and Norman introduced the induction theory. This theory is based on the assumption uh, assumption that uh, specific substances uh, which are released by degenerating endometrium induce the development of endometriosis from omnipotent, omnipotent blastema presented in connective tissue. The suggestion was made uh, that cell-free endometrial products were capable of inducing endometrial metaplasia. Genetics. Some women have may have genetic predisposition to endometriosis. Studies have shown that first-degree relatives of women with this disease are more likely to develop it as well. The search of, of, uh, for an endomet endometriosis gene is currently under the way. Immunological dysfunction. Relatively recent research has suggested involvement of the immune system in the pathogenesis of endometriosis. An altered immune response to the displaced endometrial tissue have been shown to play an important role as well. Women with this disorder appear to exhibit uh, increased humoral immune responsiveness and macrophag activation while showing diminished cell-mediated immunity with decreased T-cell and natural chiral cell responsiveness. Uh, humoral antibodies or to endometrial tissue have been found in sera of women with endometriosis. Alternation of endometrial cell fate to favor uh, anti-apoptotic and uh, proliferative phenotype is paramount for survival of the endometrial cells in the peritoneal cavity to initiate ectopic deposits and for the maintenance of the established lesions. Endometrium in patients with endometriosis express higher levels of anti-apoptotic factors. The inhibition in, uh, of the apoptosis of endometrial cells may also be mediated by uh, transcriptional activation of genes that uh, normally promotes inflammation, angiogenesis, and cell proliferation. This table shows uh, the role of different theories in pathogenesis of endometriosis, such as retrograde menstruation, metaplasia, role of hormones, oxidative stress and inflammation, immune dysfunction, apoptosis suppressors, genetic factors, and stem cells. Summary of the proposed interplay between the different factors reported in the pathogenesis of superficial versus deep endometriosis. The different initiating, pro, uh, propagating, and predisposing factors are indicated through the different shapes, respectively. The arrows indicate the interplay between the different factors. As indicated by the bold pink arrows, some of the labeled pro propagating factors create a microenvironment that impacts the differentiation of stem cells and uh, transdifferentiation of the peritoneal cells into the endometrial cells. Pathogenesis of adenomyosis. The myometrium resides between the endometrium, between the endometrium and uterine serosa, and is composed of an outer uh, longitudinal layer and inner circular layer of smooth muscle cells and supporting stromal, stromal and vascular tissue. Adenomyosis is characterized by endometrial epithelial cells and stromal fibroblasts abnormally found in the myometrium where they elicit hyperplasia and hypertrophy of surrounding smooth muscle cells. This scheme shows uh, some theories in uh, uh, pathogenesis of uh, Adenomyosis is the nova metaplasia, outside to inside theory, microtrauma of the endometrial myometrial interface, 
and invasion of the endometrial basalis into the myometrion. The invasion theory of adenomyosis development has been proposed to result from altered endometrial basalis cells or cell groups invading into the myometrium, crossing an injured or abnormal junctional zone, and subsequently establishing ectopic adenomyotic lesions and in, uh, inducing uh, gypotrophy gipo, and dysfunction of myocytes in the myometrium. In support of these hypotheses are the clinical observations that adenomyosis risk increases with repeated sharp of endometrial curettage, mm -hmm. cesarean delivery, and prior uterine surgery, uh, wherein endometrial myometrial interface is breached. From outside to inside invasion theory, in which adult endometrial cells or stem cells in retrograde menstrual effluent have the potential to infiltrate the uterine serosa and penetrate into the myometrium and develop inter, into intramyometrial endometrial implants, so called adenomyotic foci. Embryonic stem cells, it has been postulated that during uh, Millerian duct development and fusion, some remnants of the embryonic tissue may be misplaced in the myometrium, subsequently giving rise in adult women to adenomyosis. Recent somatic mutation analysis demonstrate that epithelial cells in adenomyotic lesions and in their associated eutopic endometrium derive from the same uh, endometrial epithelial progenitor cell. Adult stem cells residing in the endometrium basalis, adjustment to the myometrium may cross the endometrial myometrial interface and proliferate and differentiate into adenomyosis lesions and promote myometrial cell hyperplasia and hypertrophia that are uh, patognomonic of the disease. It has been suggested that endometrial excessive estradiol plays a central role in uterine hyperperistalsis and microtrauma following TR. This peristaltic activity of the endometrial myometrium dramatically increases with the elevated peripheral excessive estradiol level. Chronic hyperperistalsis promotes repeated cycles of autotraumatization and disruption of the endometrial myometrial interface, potentially augmenting invagination of the endometrial basalis into the myometrium and eventually leading to uh, establishment of adenomyotic lesions. In addition, iatrogenic injuries can promote a similar TR. Local production of excessive estradiol and hyperperistalsis facilitating invasion of the endometrial basalis into the myometrium, inducing adenomyosis lesions. Abnormal genetic and epigenetic factors result in the hyperestrogenism and progesterone resistance, promoting cell proliferation, migration, epithelial to mesenchymal transition, and invasiveness of endometrial cell uh, cellular components into the myometrial compartment. In addition, pituitary hormones such as prolactin and oxytocin also play a role in the pathogenesis of adenomyosis through the abnormal uterine contractility. Widespread adenomyosis in almost the entire uh, myometrium is, re is replaced by endometrial foci. The picture shows uh, the most frequent localization of the endometriosis. Uh, the localization can be in pelvic region, it's ovary, cul de sac, ultrasacralis, posterior surface of uterus, posterior broad ligament, rectovaginal sacrum, tubes and round ligaments, extra pelvic sides, intestines, rectosigmoid sacrum, terminal ileum, proximal colon, appendix, lungs and thorax, urinary tract, less common sites, it's cervix, guernical sacs, umbilicus, laparotomy, episiotomy sites, tubal stumps after sterilizations, and other. The phenotypes. Endometriosis can present as uh, some different phenotypes Super superficial endometriosis, deep endometriosis, and ovarian cyst endometriosis, so called endometrioma. Superficial or peritoneal endometriosis uh, com comprises uh, superficial lesions scattered over the peritoneal, serosal, and ovarian surfaces. Superficial adenomyotic lesions is often divided to typical black brown lesions and atypical or subtle lesions including red implants and uh, clear vesicles. Ovarian cystic endometriosis refers to an endometrioma or ovarian cyst containing duct shaped blood chocolate fluid and lined by a pseudocyst wall covered by, atopic and, uh, covered by eto ectopic endometrium. The ovary is the most common site for endometriosis. Spread to the ovary is believed to be lymphatic all through superficial implants, maybe due to retrograde menstrual flow because the ovaries are independent 
uh, independent part of the pelvis. Lesions can vary in size from spots to large endometriosis. The presence of endometrioma leads to an inflammatory environment that may impact our size quality. The anatomic relationship uh, to the cortex that contains follicles, as well as the proximity to the vasculature of the ovary, has been surgical implications. Deep endometriosis, defined as endometriosis infiltrating more than 5 mm beneath the peritoneal surface, is a multifocal pathology that may infiltrate different organs. The most commonly affected site, the intestine, vagina, uterosacral ligaments, <coughs> bladder and ureter, but deep endometriosis is also occasionally observed uh, in remote organs such as lymph nodes, umbilicus and lungs. In women with deep endometriosis, intestinal and urinary tract involvement are estimated to occur from 3.8 to uh, 37% and in 1 to 2% respectively. Once uh, intracystic pressure rises, the cyst perforates, uh, spilling its content within the peritoneal cavity. This can cause the severe abdominal pain, typically associated with the endometriosis exacerbations. Uh, the inflammatory response causes adhesions and further increase of morbidity of the disease. Classification. According to Samson, we, uh, endometriosis is divided into internal endometriosis affecting the uterine muscle and external endometriosis occurring outside of the uterine muscle. Uh, divisions of endometriosis by locations were developed according to the classification of martyrs. Endometriosis genitalis interna adenomyosis is present in the uterus or the fallopian tube. Endometriosis genitalis externa in the remaining parts of reproductive organ. Endometriosis extragenitalis and endometriotic lesions are present outside the reproductive organs. The American Fertility Society affairs proposed unique approach, the affairs score, in 1979. The stage of endometriosis was derived from the cumulative score. The weighted value system was scored and summed according to the size of the endometriotic lesions in the ovaries, <coughs> peritoneum and fallopian tubes, and the severity of adhesions at each of the aforementioned sites. The staging system was divided into four stages, one from one to five points mild, Two from 6 to 15 points moderate, three from 16 to 30 points severe, and four from uh, 31 to 54 points extensive. Major limitations of this classification are limited by reproductive uh, reprodu reproducibility and poor correlation with pelvic pain and infertility. EFI score and the Meteorosis Fertility Index. EFI score was calculated according to the EFI developed by Adamson and Pasta. It includes the following clinical and surgical factors, age, duration of infertility, pregnancy history, least, uh, least function, score including fallopian tubes, tubal fimbria and ovaries. Uh, least function score uh, is the sum of the least score of left side and the least score of the right side. If any ovary is absent, the left score was obtained by doubling the LF score of the contralateral side. Uh, RAFS uh, score of the lesions and total RFS score uh, includes. Figure shows the rating scale of the least function score and uh, the endometriosis fertility index. The Enzian classification was introduced in Austria in uh, 2005. Uh, the enzyme score is determined by extent of endometriosis during surgery. Uh, the revised enzyme classification was simplified by dividing the retroperitoneal structures into three compartments. The posterior part of the uterus was divided into the compartments A, uh, consisting of the rectovaginal septum and vagina. Compartment B, consisting of the uterosacral ligaments and pelvic walls, and compartment C, of the sigmoid colon and rectum. The prefix here indicates the presence of tumor, uh, of tumor of endometriosis. The severity of the lesions in enzyme classification is set to invasiveness less than 1 cm for grade 1, invasiveness 1 from 2 cm for grade 2, and invasiveness over 3 cm grade 3. 
The number that follows the prefix indicates the size of the lesion and after the number, the lowercase English letter indicates the affected compartment. Uh, two lowercase English letters mean bilateral disease. The invasion of endometriosis to other organ in the pelvic cavity and distant organs are pressed, uh, expressed as follows. FA is defined as adenomyosis. FB is in in, uh, involvement of the bladder. FU is uh, uh, intrin intrinsic ureter involvement. FO uh, as involvement of other localizations. And FI is intestinal involvement. Classification of internal endometriosis by Adamian. Stage 1 is a pathological process limited to submucosal layer of the body of the uterus. Stage 2 a pathological process affecting the muscle layers. Stage 3 the spread of the pathological process throughout the thickness of the muscle layer to its serous cover. Stage 4 uh, involvement of in pathological process outside uterus parietal uh, peritoneum. Adenomyosis can be nodular and cystic. A characteristic difference from the uterine fibroids is the absence of capsule and clear boundaries. Classification of ovarian endometriotic cysts. Stage 1 – Small dotted endometrioid formations on the surface of the ovary, the peritoneum, and, uh, the peritoneum of recta uterine space without formation of cystic cavities. Ovary no larger than 5-6 uh, cm in size with small endometrioid inclusions on the pelvic peritoneum. Minor adhesive process in the area of uterine appendages without the involvement of intestine. Stage 3 endometrial cyst of both ovaries, diameter of cysts of one ovary more than uh, 6 cm, and the small endometrioma of the other ovary. Endometrioid gitartopis, small size on the parietal peritoneum and small pelvis. Pronounced adhesive process in the area of the uterine appendages with a partial involvement of the intestine. Stage 4. Uh, large bilateral endometrioid ovarian cysts, more than 6 cm, with the transition of the pathological process to neighboring organs, the bladder, rectum, and sigmoid colon. Common adhesive process. Now, this video shows the uh, endometrioma of left ovary and uh, retrocervical endometriosis with adhesions forming in this area so-called chocolate fluid in uh, the uh, ovarian cyst and the metrioma. Classification of retrocervical endometriosis. Stage 1. Endometrioid lesions are located within the uh, rectovaginal fiber. Stage 2, germination of endometrioid tissue in the cervix and vaginal wall with the formation of small cysts in the serous cover of the rectosigmoid and rectum. Stage 3, the spread of pathological process to sacro-uterine ligaments, uh, serous and muscular cover, uh, muscular cover of the rectum. Stage 4, involvement of patho in the pathological process the mucous membrane of the rectum will spread the process to the peritoneum erect the uterine space with the formation of an adhesive process in the area of uterine appendages as well as the spread process toward the per uh, parametrium involving the distant urinary systems, ureters and bladder. This picture shows so-called frozen pelvis with invisible deep endometriosis, bilateral ovary, left cardinal ligament, ureter left, anterior wall of the rectum. Peritoneal lesions and uh, an ovarian endometrioma due to the endometriosis. The, uh, this picture shows uh, extensive adhesions uh, behind the uterus, ovary with endometrioma, <coughs> blue and black lesions, forming of adhesions, so-called red lesions, and uh, red lesions on peritoneum here, and adhesions forming uh, surrounding these uh, endometriotic implants. Risk factors for endometriosis may include early menarche. Epidemiological studies analyzing the cycle of women with endometriosis have shown that the early first cycle before the age of 11 is associated with the risk of endometriosis. Shorter than 27 days genital cycles, genital defects, including human overgrowth or narrowing of the cervical channel, the risk of endometriosis is increased in women with short cycles, for example, less than 27 days but it's uh, unrelated to the number of bleeding days and the volume of menstruation. Low body mass index, small number of births, 
uh, Caucasian race, age 25-29, daily consumption of alcohol uh, in the amount at least uh, 10 grams uh, in day. Endometriosis is more often diagnosed in infertile uh, women who are active smokers and body mass index is normal or low. Repeated sharp endometrial curettage, cesarean delivery and prior uterine surgery is also the risk factors for endometriosis. Clinical manifestations. In large retrospective analysis in the United Kingdom, general practice research database concerning uh, the prevalent symptoms within three years before the diagnosis of endometriosis. Uh, women with subsequent diagnosis of endometriosis had the following symptoms abdominal, abdominal pelvic pain, dysmenorrhea, heavy menstrual bleeding, infertility, dyspareunia, postcoital bleeding, urinary tract symptoms. The ASHRAE Endometriosis Guideline Development Group recommends that clinicians should consider the diagnosis of endometriosis in individuals presenting with the following cyclical and non-cyclical signs and symptoms dysmenorrhea, deep dyspareunia, dysuria, dyshesia, painful rectal bleeding or gematuria, uh, shoulder pain, deep pain, uh, catamental pneumothorax, cyclical cough, gemoptesis, uh, chest pain, uh, clinical scar swelling, and pain, uh, fatigue, and infertility. Dysmenorrhea and pelvic pain often starts after years of pain-free uh, menses, uh, starts before the onset of period and continues throughout menses. Most studies fail to show correlation between degree of pain and severity of endometriosis. Uh, causation of pain local peritoneal inflammation, deep infiltration proximity to nerve fibers, adhesion formations and fibrotic thickening, uh, collection of the uh, of shed menstrual blood in implants, uh, resulting in a painful uh, traction and physiological movements. Infertility due to endometriosis, uh, possible mechanism is mechanical causes, altered tubal ovarian relationships, altered uh, tubal motility, impaired oocyte pickup, alternation in peritoneal fluid, high level of macrophages, prostaglandin, cytokines, effects sperm motility, sperm oocyte interaction, sperm phagocytosis, implantation failure, alternation of systematic immune response, uh, elevated level of anti-endometrial antibodies, uh, elevated cells mediated uh, gametocyte injury. Germinal factors of infertility, defective follicular genesis, uh, luteinized uh, unruptured follicle, uh, luteal phase deficiency, hyperprolactinemia and galactaria, fertilization and implantation failure, Mas monthly uh, fecundity rate is lower in women with uh, mild disease, no evidence that spontaneous abortion rates are higher in endometriosis. Diagnosis. The first is uh, anamnesis. Listen to the patient. Carry on uh, detailed anamnesis in a very slow fashion. This simple action gives the best approach to, to the disease. She has so much to tell, uh, to show with her face and expression. In most cases, the disease can be understood just by listening. Common elements in history include nulliparity and regular menstrual cycles with prolonged uh, flow of eight and more or more days. Onset of pain usually precedes flow uh, by a few days and begins to result in uh, one, two days into the menses. Symptoms also usually improve during pregnancy and after menopause. They can uh, recure postpartum with um, or with uh, postmenopausal hormone replacement therapy. Uh, a familial genetic predisposition has been documented. A woman with the first degree related with endometriosis has a lifetime risk of the disease approximately, approximately uh, 10 times than uh, that of a woman without uh, an affected family member. Clinical examination can further increase the, the suspicion of presence of endometriosis and guide the planning of further imaging. However, the clinical examination has low specificity and sensitivity for the diagnosis of endometriosis, especially peritoneal endometriosis, and clinicians should consider the diagnosis of endometriosis in women suspected of the disease even if the clinical examination is normal. But sometimes clinical examinations gives you much information about endometriosis in such cases like scar endometriosis. Also, clinical examinations might be normal in many women with endometriosis. A routine inspection of the vagina using speculum, bimenal palpation, erectile vaginal palpation is recommended. 
Speculum examination sometimes can give you information about cervical endometriosis or um, uh, retro cervical endometriosis grows into vagina. Several studies emphasize the importance of inspection of the posterior fornix and rectovaginal di digital examinations for the diagnosis of infiltrating nodules of the vagina, uterosacral ligaments or the pouch of Douglas, as well as the detection of infiltration or masses in the rectovaginal septum and ovaries or displacement of the uterus of the cervix. Pelvic tenderness, a fixed uh, retroverted uterus, tender uterosacral ligaments, or enlarged ovaries suggest endometriosis. Deeply infiltrated nodules on the uterosacral ligaments, parts of Douglas or visible lesions on vagina or cervix gives more uh, certainty. The detection is improved by examined during menstruation. Acceptance may be in, uh, in use. Rectovaginal examination is required if suspecting uh, deep uh, infiltrating endometriosis. Transvaginal ultrasound. Both, both ESRA and the American College of Obstetrician and Gynecology recommend the use of transvaginal ultrasound in diagnostic workup of women with suspected endometriosis. Transvaginal ultrasound is useful in identifying endometriosis. However, the sensitivity and specificity of the examinations are dependent on the interests and experience of the sonographer and on the quality of ultrasound equipment. The International Deep Endometriosis Analysis Group, uh, confronting the wide variety of terms and uh, descriptions used to identify endometriosis uh, at transvaginal uh, scanning, proposes some basic steps that should be followed uh, at the time of examination. Routine evaluation of the uterus and adnexa, search for adenomyosis and presence of the or, or the absence of endometriomas. Evaluation of transvaginal son sonographic soft markers, such as specific tenderness and ovarian mobility. Assessment of the Douglas patch status sliding sign. Uh, assessment for deep uh, infiltrating endometriosis nodules at the anterior and posterior compartments. Transvaginal ultrasound and diagnostic of endometriosis. Compared to laparoscopy, transvaginal ultrasound has limited value in diagnostic peritoneal endometriosis, but it's useful tool both to make and exclude the diagnosis of ovarian endometrioma. Transvaginal ultrasounds may have a role in the diagnosis of disease involving the bladder and rectum. Its sensitivity and uh, about uh, 83% and specificity uh, about 98% um, for endometrioma. The role of transvaginal ultrasound in the diagnosis of deep endometriosis is more complex given the multitude of possible locations of deep endometriosis. The ESHA guideline recommends to use transvaginal ultrasound for identifying or ruling out rectal endometriosis. This ultrasound picture shows the endometriosis grows from outside in. Hypohygienic uh, uh, nodal endometriosis in the muscle layer of the rectum. This is so called submucosal uh, layer of the rectum. The typical ultrasound features of endometriomas were assessed in the large patient cohort of the International Ovarian Tumor Analysis Studies. Based on these characteristics, the following um, diagnostic rule for an endometriomas was developed an ovarian cyst with ground glass echogenicity of the cyst fluid, homogeneous, hypoechogenic, mass with low levels internal echoes with hyperechoic foci within wall, one to four locals, unilocular, multilocular with thick thin septa and no solid parts. Therefore, diagnosis of endometrioma should always evoke a detailed investigation for other peritoneal and deep endometriosis lesions. Magnetic resonance imaging. Due to the high cost and limited availability, MRI is not considered as the first line imaging modality in the diagnosis of endometriosis. However, the gross number of the studies suggest that it has a role in the diagnosis of endometriosis because of the greater ability to detect small lesions. However, the peritoneal endometriotic lesions are only identified by MRI if they are hemorrhagic, greater than 5 mm, or when associated with extensive adhesions, uh, this distorting the normal anatomy. Uh, for in this picture, um, bilateral T1 hyperintensive adnexal cyst showing T2 shading measuring 
uh, three and three centimeters uh, on the left side and two and two centimeters on the right side. They are showing blooming foci, uh, sensibility weighted imaging, sequence and leveling diffusion restriction. Another case of magnetic resonance imaging. Uh, pelvic MRI revealed enlarged of the uterus, the full thickening of junctional zone, the junctional zone and the muscle demarcation line burning, its adenomyosis. Laboratory studies. The complete blood cells count with the differential may help to differentiate pelvic infection from endometriosis as well as the assesses the degree of blood loss. Urinalysis and urine culture blood should be sent if urinary tract infection is in the differential diagnosis. In addition, cervical gram stain and cultures should be considered because sexually transmitted diseases can also cause pelvic pain and infertility. With the serum cancer antigen uh, 125 test, several measurements have low sensitivity in detecting endometriosis. Also, levels uh, may be elevated in advanced cases, but the results are useful as prognost um, prognosticators of treatment outcome. However, normal post-treatment values do not mean that endometriosis is absent. Thus, uh, this test lacks uh, adequate sensitivity or specificity to be of clinical value. Laparoscopic visualization with histological confirmation remains the gold standard for definite diagnosis of endometriosis. During laparoscopy, one should systematically evaluate the abdominal cavity as well as the pelvic cavity for the presence of endometriotic lesions. A good quality laparoscopy should include systematic checking of the uterus and adnexa, the peritoneum of ovarian fossa, the vesica uterine fold, Douglas and pararectal spaces, the rectum and sigmoid isolated um, because of isolated sigmoid nodules, the appendix and cecum, and the diaphragm. Gisteroscopy is indicated in patients diagnosed with endometriosis when there is also infertility in the investigation of intrauterine causes of dysmenorrhea and abnormal uterine bleeding. Gisteroscopic video shows uh, the small hemorrhagic foci assuming a chocolate brown color, suggestive for adenomyosis. However, diagnostic gisteroscopy cannot establish a definite diagnosis of adenomyosis. Considering that its field of vision is restricted to the endometrial surface layer, the following aspects are generally indicative of the pathological conditions. Irregular endometrium with thin openings seen on the endometrial surface, pronounced hypervascularization, and endometrial strawberry pattern. Another signs of adenomyosis can be found on gisteroscopy is fibrocystic appearance of intrauterine lesions. Hemorrhagic cyst lesions assuming uh, dark blue or chocolate brown appearance. Positive gistology confirms the diagnosis of endometriosis. Negative gistology does not exclude it. Whether the gistology should be obtained in if peritoneal disease alone is present uh, is controversial. Visual inspection is uh, usually adequate, but gistological confirmation of at least one lesion is ideal. In case of ovarian endometrioma more than 3 cm and in deeply infiltrative disease, histology should be obtained to identify endometriosis and to execute rare instances of malignancy. Treatment options. The medical therapy and surgical treatment. The medical therapy should, can include uh, uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, uh, cyclic oral contraceptives, progesterones, antiprogestins, uh, gonadotropin-releasing hormone agonists and antagonists, aromatase inhibitors, selective estrogen receptor modulators, selective progesterone receptor modulators, and conservative and uh, surgical treatment can be conservative surgery and uh, definitive surgery. First line medical treatment of pain due to endometriosis is often a non steroidal anti inflammatory drug. Good evidence exists uh, support of the use of uh, NCAIDs 
for primary dysmenorrhea, but in Cochrane meta-analysis there were insufficient data to show that uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs significantly reduce endometriosis associated pain. Nearer modulators, for example, antidepressants, selective serotonin uptake inhibitors or anticonvulsants are used mainly by pain medicine specialists and primary care physicians in the management of chronic or persistent pain. Neuromodulators differ from the conventional analgetics, such as uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, in uh, that they primarily affect the central nervous system modulation of pain rather than the peripheral mediators of inflammation. Tricyclic antidepressants, selective serotonin uptake inhibitors and anticonvulsants have shown a promise in the treatment of endometriosis-associated pain. However, in randomized clinical trials for the management of chronic mm, pelvic pain, they have not been proven by the clearly superior to placebo and are sometimes associated with severe dose limiting side effects. Next step is uh, hormonal treatment for endometriosis associated pain. Hormonal therapy is based on the evidence that endometriosis is a steroid dependent condition. The most commonly prescribed treatments for endometriosis include drugs that modify the hormonal environment either by suppressing ovarian activity or acting directly on steroid receptors and enzymes found on the lesions. They also include progesterones, antiprogesterone against combined oral contraceptives, gonadotropin-releasing hormone agonists, gonadotropin-releasing hormone antagonists, levonorgestrel intrauterine system, danazole, and aromatase inhibitors. Combined hormonal contraceptives. The Cochrane review by Brown et al. based on five randomized control trials, compared, uh, comparing combined oral contraceptive pills with placebo, uh, the review uh, concluded that oral contraceptive pills was associated with improvements in self-reported pain, dysmenorrhea, clinically non-menstrual pain, dyspareunia, and dyskesia. Continuous use of oral contraceptive pills and associated achievement of amenorrhea rather than standard cyclic use has been suggested as an effective treatment of endometriosis-associated dysmenorrhea. In a review on oral contraceptive pills use, continuous treatment did not seem to affect coagula uh, coagulation metabolism or bone metabolism and bone mineral density more than con uh, conventionally taken oral contraceptive pills. Progestogens, including progestogen only contraceptives and antiprogestogens. The Cochrane Review of Brown uh, et al. On the most recent Cochrane review reporting that the, on the effectiveness of progestogens, the uh, medroxyprogesterone acetate, cytoproterone acetate, medroxyprogesterone acetate, noretindron, noretesterone acetate, desagestrel, both commonly also prescribed as progestogen only contraceptives, day and guest, and antiprogestogens, gestrinone, a substance that will prevent cell from making or using progestogens. In the treatment of endometriosis-associated pain, the conclusion from this literature review that the both continuous progestogens and continuous gestrinone are effective therapies of the treatment of painful symptoms associated with endometriosis. This table shows uh, the available progesterones, uh, those uh, and the, the regimen of uh, use of these drugs. Antiprogestogens. Uh, gestrinone causes the cellular inactivation and uh, the degeneration of endometrial implants. Uh, amenorrhea occurs in 52,000% uh, of cases. Equally effective, seem to prove good alternative. Side effects are androgenic but less intense than danazole. Pregnancy is contraindicated due to muscul muscularization of the fetus. Danazole is a synthetic steroid delivery from the etanyl testosterone, was used for many decades for the treatment of endometriosis-associated symptoms and was the standard control medication in many clinical drug trials. Uh, it, it has a high affinity uh, to the androgen receptors and moderate affinity to progesterone and glucocorticoid receptors, which is the cause of unwanted side effects. Uh, the Shrek guideline developed group strongly believed that the oral danazole should not be used uh, unless no other medical therapy is available due to its severe side effects, acne, oedema, vaginal sporting, weight gain, muscle cramps, uh, deepening of the voice, increase in facial hair.
It's recommended to prescribe women a levonorgestrel releasing intrauterine system or an ethanogestrel releasing subdermal implant to reduce endometriosis associated pain. Uh, gonadotropin releasing hormone agonis. Gonadotropin releasing hormone agonis are synthetic analogs of the gonadotropin releasing peptide hormone. Gonadotropin releasing hormone agonis functions for their interruption of the normal pulsatile signaling of physiological gonadotropin releasing hormone. Persistent evaluation of gonadotropin releasing hormone agonist activity leads to downregulation of the gonadotropin releasing hormone receptor, thereby causing decreased levels of luteinizing and follicle stimulizing hormones and testosterone. It's recommended to prescribe women gonadotropin releasing hormone agonist to reduce endometriosis associated pain, although evidence is limited regarding dosage or duration treatment. The Asia Endometriosis Guideline Development Group recommends that gonadotropin releasing hormone agonists are prescribed at the second line, for example, if hormonal contraceptives or progesterones have been ineffective due to their side effect profile. Clinicians should consider the prescribing combined hormonal add back therapy alongside uh, uh, gonadotropin releasing hormone agonist therapy to prevent bone loss and hypoestrogenic symptoms. Uh, for example, gonadotropin releasing hormone agonists uh, lepralid, gazerelin, guzerelin, nafarelin, triptaralin, they uh, should be used with add back therapy, conjugated equine estrogens uh, with noroethendron or uh, tibalone with uh, calcium and vi vitamin D daily. Uh, goal of add back effectively treatment endometriosis associated pain while preventing vasomotor symptoms or bone loss. Gondropin releasing hormone antagonists are synthetic analogs of the gondropin releasing hormone peptide and achieve castrated testosterone levels by shutting down the gondropin releasing mediated release of luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone from the anterior pituitary. Gondropin releasing hormone antagonists, garnirelix, acetat, and cetrorelix. It can be considered to, to prescribe women gondropin releasing hormone antagonists to reduce the endometriosis associated pain. All through the evidence is limited regarding dosage or duration of treatment. The Asher Endometriosis Guideline Development Group recommends that the gondropin releasing hormone antagonists are prescribed as a second line, for example, if hormonal contraceptives or progestogens have been ineffective due to their side effect profile. Similar as for gondropin releasing hormone agonists, uh, the uh, Guideline Development Group recommends that in young women and adolescents, gonadotropin releasing hormone antagonists should be used after careful consideration and discussion with the practitioner in a secondary or tertiary care setting, uh, considering potential side effects and the long-term health risks. Aromatase inhibitors uh, inhibit the action of the enzyme aromatase. Aromatase inhibitors block this pathway and consequently suppress estrogen levels. Treatment with oral letrozole plus noritesterone acetate or desigestrel or anestrozole as vaginal suppository or orally in combination with oral contraceptive pills resulted in significant decrease of endometriosis associated pain in premenopausal women. In women with endometriosis associated pain, refractory to other medicals or surgical treatment, it's recommended to prescribe aromatase inhibitors as they reduce endometriosis associated pain. Aromatase inhibitors may be prescribed in combination with oral contraceptives, progesterones, gondropin releasing hormone agonists, or gondropin releasing hormone antagonists. Due to severe side effects, vaginal dryness, hot flushes, uh, diminished bone mineral density, aromatase inhibitors should only be prescribed to women after all other options for medical or surgical treatment are exhausted. Considering those aspects, aromatase inhibitors should be preserved for women with endometriosis associated pain refractory to other medical or surgical treatment. Letrozole, Femara, is a comp competitive inhibitor of the aromatase enzyme system that leads to a reduction on plasma estrogen levels in postmenopausal women. Initial results appear promising. Further studies are required to establish the role of aromatase inhibitors in the management of endometriosis. American College of obstetricians and gynecologists recommend three months uh, trial of non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs and uh, oral contraceptive pills therapy. If pain persists after three months, then laparoscopy. If patients over 18 years 
old and wish to avoid surgery empiric gantropin releasing hormone agonists. If pain resolves, then diagnosis of endometriosis is confirmed. Any low dose uh, oral contraceptive pills containing uh, 30 35 mg of retinyl estradiol used continuously to achieve amenorrhea can be effective in the treatment of endometriosis. Surgical treatment to eliminate endometriotic lesions and divide adhesions has long been an important part of the management of endometriosis. Historically, surgical approaches were achieved at open surgery, but recent decades, uh, laparoscopy has dominated. Elimination of endometriosis may be achieved by excision, diatomy or ablation, vaporization. Division of adhesions uh, aims to restore pelvic anatomy. In addition, some clinicians use interruption on pelvic nerve pathways with the intention of the improving pain control. When surgery is performed, clinicians may consider excision instead of, uh, instead of ablation and coagulation to reduce endometriosis-associated pain. Surgical interruption of pelvic nerve pathways. It can be concluded that laparoscopic ultrasacral nerve ablation is not beneficial as an additional procedure to conventional laparoscopic surgery for endometriosis, as it offers no additional benefit over surgery alone. Presacral neurectomy is beneficial for treatment of endometriosis associated midline pain is an adjunct to conventional uh, laparoscopic surgery, but it should be stressed that uh, presacral neurectomy requires a high degree of skill and associated with an increased risk of adverse effects such as intraoperative bleeding and postoperative constipation, urinary urgency, and the painless first stage of labor. Surgery of ovarian endometrioma. When performing surgery in women with ovarian endometrioma, clinicians should perform cystectomy instead of drainage and coagulation, as cystectomy reduces recurrence of endometrioma and endometriosis associated pain. When performing surgery in women with ovarian endometrioma, clinicians can consider both cystectomy and laser vaporization, as both techniques appear to have similar recurrence rates uh, beyond the first year after surgery. When performing surgery for ovarian endometrioma, Specific caution should be used to minimize ovarian damage. Deep endometriosis extends beneath the peritoneum and may affect the ultrasacral ligaments, pelvic side walls, rectovaginal septum, vagina, bowel, bladder, or ureter. Excision of these nodules is usually performed when surgical treatment is chosen. Colorectal involvement is not rare with deep endometriosis. Deep endometriosis involving the bowel has been reported in 5 to 12 percent of women affected by endometriosis. The term bowel endometriosis used when endometrial-like glands in stroma infiltrate the wall of gastrointestinal tract. Principles treatment and uh, identifying deep endometriosis lesions. Identify all important anatomical structures. Ureter, colon, small bowel, major vessels, adnexa, ureter, uh, uterus, bladder nerves. Identify the lesions. Sign of deep endometriosis include fibrosis with or without characteristic dark spots, dense adhesions, distortion of anatomical structures, infiltrations, reduces, reduced tissue elasticity, hemorrhagic cystic structures. Perform easy steps first uh, as uh, this will facilitate difficult ones. Divide adhesions and restore pelvic anatomy in addition to complete excision of endometriosis. Free and isolate the lesions. Start the dissection in areas free of disease. 
optimize exposure of by using manipulators, ovary epoxy, and additional ports if necessary. I am to uh, aim to complete uh, excision whenever reasonable and possible. Surgical approach for bowel endometriosis. Some aspects of treatment of women with colorectal endometriosis. It should be done it, uh, in a multidisciplinary setting with a minimally invasive approach aiming to radically remove uh, of all endometriosis lesions. Apart from significant improvement of pain, radical treatment of deep endometriosis also positively impacts fertility outcomes. For lesions on the sigmoid colon, a segmental resection should be performed. For deep endometriosis involving the rectum, a more tailored approach can be chosen. A laparoscopic approach is preferred because it's associated with better postoperative recovery, shorter hospital stay, and better cosmetic outcome. If relevant laparoscopic uh, experience is not available, it's recommended to refer the patient to an expert center. This table shows uh, different tactics for deep infiltrating endometriosis. For anterior deep infiltrating endometriosis uh, affecting bladder, it can be laparoscopic partial cyst uh, cystectomy. For posterior uh, deep infiltrating endometriosis, uh, it can be lapar laparoscopic resection of uterosacral ligaments. Laparoscopic assisted vaginal resection of deep infiltrating endometriosis in posterior fornix, and some operation, as we say, about the intestinal endometriosis. Clinicians can consider gastrectomy with or without removal of the ovaries, with removal of all visible endometriosis lesions, in those women who no longer wish to conceive and fail to respond to more conservative treatments. Women should be informed that gastrectomy will not necessarily cure the symptoms of this disease. When a decision is made whatever uh, to remove the ovaries, the long-term consequences of early menopause and possible need of hormone replacement therapy should be considered. The Asher Endometriosis Guideline Development Group recommends that when a gastrectomy is performed, a total gastrectomy is preferred. The Asher Endometriosis Guideline Development Group recommends that clinicians discuss non-medical strategies to address quality of life and physiological well-being in women managing the symptoms of endometriosis. However, no recommendations can be made for any specific non-medical intervention. Chinese medicine, nutrition, electrotherapy, acupuncture, physiotherapy, exercise, and physiological interventions to reduce pain or remove quality of life measures in women with endometriosis as the potential benefits and harms are unclear. Treatment of endometriosis-associated infertility. Based on the results of Cochrane review, suppression of ovarian function by means of danazole, gondropenilizing hormone agonists, progesterones, oral contraceptive pills to improve fertility in women with endometriosis is not effective and should be not be offered for this indication alone. Women seeking pregnancy should not be prescribed postoperative hormone suppression with the sole purpose to enhance the future pregnancy rates. Those women who cannot attempt to or decide not to conceive immediately after surgery may be offered hormone therapy as it does not negatively impact their fertility and improve the immediate outcomes of surgery for pain. Women should be uh, consulted for their chances to become pregnant after surgery. To identify patients that may benefit from uh, assisted reproductive technology after surgery, the endometriosis fertility index should be used as it is uh, validated, reprodu reproducible, uh, and cost effective. The results of uh, other fertility investigations, such as uh, their partner's sperm analysis, should be taken into account. Operative laparoscopy could be offered as a treatment option for endometriosis associated infertility in ISRM stage 1 to endometriosis as it improves the rate of ongoing pregnancy. Clinicians may consider operative laparoscopy for the treatment of endometrioma associated infertility as it may increase the chance of natural pregnancy, although no data com from uh, comparative studies exist. Also, no compelling evidence exists that operative laparoscopy for deep endometriosis improves the fertility. Operative laparoscopy may represent a treatment options in uh, symptomatic patients wishing to conceive. The uh, guideline uh, development group recommendations that uh, the decision to perform surgery should be guided by the presence or absence of pain symptoms, patient age and preferences, history of previous surgery, presence of other infertility factors, ovarian reserve, and estimated uh, <clears throat> fertility index. 
In a fertile woman with uh, ASRM stage 1, 2 endometriosis, clinicians may perform intrauterine inseminations with ovarian stimulation instead of expectant management for uh, intrauterine insemination alone, as it increases the pregnancy rate. Also, the value of uh, intrauterine insemination in fertile women with ISRM stage 3, 4 endometriosis with tubal pregnancy is uh, uncertain. The use of intrauterine insemination with ovarian stimulation could be considered. Assisted reproductive technology can be performed for infertility associated with endometriosis, especially for tubal uh, function is compromised. If there is a male factor in fertility, in case of low uh, fertility, endometriosis fertility index and or other treatment have failed. In women with endometrioma, clinicians may use antibiotic prophylaxis at the time of the outside or site retrieval. Also, the risk of ovarian abscess formation following follicular aspiration is low. Clinicians are not recommended to routinely perform surgery prior to uh, assisted reproductive technology to improve live birth rates in women with ISRM stage 1 2 endometriosis, and the potential benefits are unclear. Clinicians are not recommended routinely to perform surgery for ovarian endometrioma prior to assisted reproductive technologies to improve live birth rates, as the current evidence shows that no benefit in surgery is likely to have negative impact on ovarian reserve. Regarding non-medical strategies on infertility, there is no clear evidence that any non-medical interventions for women with endometriosis will be of benefit to increase the chance of pregnancy. Oocyte cryopreservation is expensive and exposes women to some clinical risks. Uh, also, some studies show that feasibility of fertility preservation in women with ovarian endometriosis still have many questions and remains unanswered, unanswered and there is uh, currently insufficient data to support fertility preservation for all women with endometriosis. Patients should be advised to become pregnant with the, the sole purpose of treating endometriosis. As the pregnancy does not always lead, lead to improvement of symptoms or re reduction of disease progression. Clinicians should be aware uh, that there may uh, be an increased risk uh, of the first trimester miscarriage and ectopic pregnancy in women with endometriosis. Recurrence in endometriosis has been defined as a recurrence of pain, dysmenorrhea, dyspareunia, pelvic pain, as clinical pelvic fibrotic areas or tender nodules, or radiological detection of the current or endometriosis lesions, surgically confirmed lesions, uh, or as a repeat rise of the marker CA125 after surgery. When surgery is indicated in women with endometrioma, clinicians should perform ovarian cystectomy instead of drainage and electro electrocoagulation. For the secondary prevention of endometriosis associated with dysmenorrhea, dyspareunia, and non menstrual pelvic pain, however, the risk of reduced ovarian reserves should be taken into account. Clinicians should consider the prescribing of the postoperative use of levonorgestrel releasing intrauterine system or, or uh, a combined hormonal contraceptive for at least 8 or 24 months, 18 or 24 months for the secondary prevention of endometriosis state dysmenorrhea. After surgical management, uh, ovarian endometrioma in women not immediately seeking for conception, clinicians are recommended to offer long-term hormone treatment for example, combined hormonal contraceptives for the secondary prevention of endometrioma and endometriosis associated related symptoms recurrence. For the prevention of recurrence of deep endometriosis and associated symptoms, long term administration of post operative hormonal treatment can be considered. Asymptomatic endometriosis. The guideline uh, development group actually recommends that clinicians should inform and counsel women about the, any incidental finding of endometriosis. The GDG recommends that uh, clinicians should not routinely perform surgical excision ablation for uh, incidental finding of asymptomatic endometriosis at the time of surgery. Clinicians should not prescribe medical treatment in women with incidental findings of endometriosis. Also, there is no direct evidence of benefit in preventing endometriosis in the future. Women can be advised for uh, aiming a healthy lifestyle and diet with reduced alcohol intake and regular physical activity. The usefulness of hormonal contraceptives for a primary prevention of endometriosis is uncertain. What's new in treatment of endometriosis? 
Uh, it's some new drugs. Uh, Elagolix. Uh, it's the phase three, uh, phase three clinical trial introduced uh, a new and promotes the treatment of for endometriosis. Oral uh, uh, anti-gonadotropic agents have a sound future. They arrest the pro progression of the disease and dramatically reduce pain. Relief is fast and significant. New clinical trials for similar drugs are ongoing. In the publication of reference, Lagolix compared with placebo showed a significant decrease from baseline in mean of pain score. The significant effects were seen at three months and six months of treatment. Proelix. Selective progesterone receptor modulators are a class of drugs with progesterone and antagonist activity that may confer therapeutic benefits for reproductive disorders and premenopausal women. Endometrial structure, which is, uh, which is uh, dynamically controlled by circulation sex hormones, is likely to be uh, perturbed by progesterone receptor modulators through their progesterone antagonist properties. A selective progesterone receptor modulators uh, CDB uh, 4124 and uh, telepistol acetate was clinically studied recently. Its performance as a treatment of endometriosis was proven. It's a drug with progesterone antagonist activity. There are some else new prospective drugs for treatment of endometriosis like resveratrol. It's a natural drug derived from the grapevine, induces the apoptosis in endometrial stromal cells via the suppression of surviving expression. Uh, scientists are working uh, in the animal experimentations with the endometriosis surgical implants in rats, where they demonstrate the suppressive effect of resveratrol on the progression of the disease. Non-steroidal antiestrogens uh, bind to estrogen receptors can act in either estrogen agonists or antagonists depending on the target uh, tissue. Have estrogen antagonist activity on the endometrium, but agonist activity on bone and circulating lipoproteins. Selective estrogen receptor modulators like raloxifen uh, decrease the volume of implants in those dependent manner on animal studies. Thank you for your attention.